Hello there guys and welcome, welcome back to the channel. Now New Nations going up against Fort Loki in War 3 of Season 33. Now we did, wait, well we do face them pretty much every season. Obviously Fort Loki needs no introduction. Very popular alliance with tons of content creators. Strong Masters level alliance as well. They did play second I believe last season as well. So uh, definitely not an easy war. Now we did fight them the last season. And we actually had a perfect war against them. When all three battle groups finished with the donut. And this war goes anything but. Man this war was close and crazy. But before I get into uh, the actual for Loki war. I do want to make full disclosure. That I'm going to showcase and explain later on. I actually did have one more fight after I uploaded the last war video because we had somebody else like uh, wrong path and then we had all the plans basically changed and uh, I I actually got woken up because I was taking a, a nap after my war fights were done uh, because I do sometimes get a bit drowsy due to my uh, back medication but either way so I got woken up uh, with kind of like fairly urgent instructions to take a fight that I had not done before and I did mess up and I did die so I'm going to account for that uh at the end when i go over my loyalty use and everything else uh but i just want to be fully transparent that i did die in the previous war at the very end taking a fight like in a rush that i wasn't you know assigned for or prepared to take really but still a death is a death and uh, you know my bg doesn't want to count it for totals but i still want to add it in because i did die ultimately that's what it comes down to no matter the other circumstances that being said, let's jump into this war, and uh, this time I'm using a team of uh, Proxima, just there for synergy, Nebula and Nimrod. Now, Nebula is going to be star of this show, and Nebula is going to be pretty much doing all of the fights. I must say that I do start typically my war fights in the morning after the war has already started, and at that point, I think for Loki had already like well over 100 attacker kills, and it was clear that this is going to be our worst war ever I, I mean this season so far uh we finished the first two wars i think with four deaths each and you know uh we've lost the first one won the second one but by the time i woke up we were already i believe on uh, f five or six deaths so it wasn't looking great for us because i i do for loki didn't have the greatest war either let's make that clear and uh, there was basically a tie or one death difference at all times throughout this war but all the time for Loki was ahead in exploration by like 30 or 40 attacker kills. So we were the alliance that's kind of chasing up all the time. And, uh, you know, that just added to the stress. This entire war was so stressful. As it was going on, I was, you know, just checking the war screen every three minutes, every five minutes to see what's happening. But uh, there's tons of suspense and uh, we're going to get to it. So here, uh, my plan is easy uh, with Nebula against Dragon Man. If Thanks to Proxima Synergy, I start with 10 charges, and Dragon Man actually doesn't even get his power gain buff at the beginning. So the plan in this Dragon Man fight is a very, very straightforward. Just uh, amp up some charges. I don't think I'm going to even try to get to 20 charges. It's just kind of bait out the heavy attack, take some hits in a block, and, uh, you know, when I am close to two bars of power, just parry, drop a combo, 16 shocks, more than enough, and that's one dead Dragon Man. Uh, so this one was very, very easy. Now the next fight, the next fight's actually kind of lucky. Actually very lucky. The next fight was worrisome, obviously, because of the global node, unstoppable armor. And Heimdall is a pesky defender. Here is my first potion use, uh, first potion. This war is also quite expensive for me. It uh, eclipsed uh, the total cost of the first two wars by a lot. So I used more, you know, items and loyalty than in the first two wars combined now this Heimdall fight obviously here's the problem every time Heimdall uses a uh, special attack he procs an armor up so he has a chance to go unblockable on top of that uh, on top of all of that uh, obviously whenever he gains an armor up himself he has a chance to go stoppable now here we can see how clutch is nebulous region but here I dropped my level two <laughs> and again I just got so lucky that he didn't turtle up so, I, I get hit here again. My regen is covering all the damage. My nebula's regen can be so OP. And here, I just get so lucky, lucky that he tries to throw that heavy attack. And that heavy attack animation lasts forever. <laughs> so, as I th throw my special attack, he's trying to heavy me. And that leaves him open. And my level 2 goes through. And Heimdall's dead. And I hardly take any damage thanks to the regen. Now, this was not the greatest fight uh, at all. But, you know, Nebula just absolutely clutched through that. 
then again, had I gotten hit by that level one, you know, I don't think I would have been like in dead, dead serious trouble. I, I still would have had ways out of that fight, but it definitely would make it a lot more difficult. It definitely would. I would need to kind of like throw heavy attacks and, you know, rely on some regen when I would get hit. Now, this is a mix master. Um, this is a mix master Nimrod. And as you can notice, it, it's not master or it's not mixing because it's not awaiting. And it's because Nebula again starts with 10 charges. That automatically reduces all of the ability accuracy Nimrod has to zero, including the nodes. So no armor triggers under any circumstances, which means I can totally ignore the global. And also no mix master, no nothing. I just kind of need to get to my level three, drop my level three and, uh, you know, go on living my life happily ever after. Because after level three, Nebula does have fairly good new, new potential. Now I do make a mistake here with level one away. I should be better at fighting Nimrod because I fight Nimrod virtually every day in Alliance quest. But, you know, we're going to ride that off on nerves. And here, even blocking, he still inflicts himself with shocks, which is quite neat. So he's starting to take more damage. And uh, I will, I think, kind of play it spicy a bit towards the end. I am actually going to end up parrying him a bit, I think, if I remember correctly. But here at this point, we can see that, you know, we're clearly winning the HP race. Unfortunately, again, I blunder there a bit. I regen does trigger. Here at this point, Nimrod is kind of halfway down. And I'm just thinking, you know, uh, my special three god mod expired. So I just parried him and dropped a level two. Uh, I leveled connected that level two before he could proc any armor ups and the fight was over there. And even if that didn't work, even if he would go unstoppable, I would be able just to, you know, get my charges back. Now this Nimrod against Apoc, as we all know, Nimrod is an absolute mutant hunter. There is a uh, very little kind of stress here. Um, the main key thing is just don't parry him while window of opportunity stun is active. And uh, that's about it. Oh, I actually forgot to add this invulnerability boost to my boost count. That means another 10k loyalty. Man, this war was so expensive. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so basically I just need to kind of wait out the window of opportunity stun. As soon as I do that, uh, life is good. And uh, I can get some armor ups. And as I get some armor ups, uh, you know, uh, I can enter my eradicate protocol and uh, everything's fine. So again, now uh, my ability accuracy cannot be reduced against mutants. So I don't need to worry about my parries failing. Here I had 10 charges. Nimrod drops a level two and that apocalypse is uh, absolutely dead. So just to relive this level two. So he's at 72% health. And uh, he's at 0% health. <laughs> there we go. That, that's what Nimrod does to any mutants anywhere on the map. Bring them on uh, when Nimrod's ready. Right, and uh, that was the end of the first half. Now, the second half is after the boss is done. What I need to add here, we are still behind in exploration at this point. Not as much. And uh, we have one death lead. We have one death lead. Very important, because obviously it adds to the stress here of the fight. And uh, so here I'm going to be fully boosting again which is fine. That's a boost start four. Obviously not always get the chance to do everything with a single set of boosts. I should have probably tried using Alliance War specific boost, but I, I, I do have plenty of the 15 and 20% regular boost. So kind of okay with that. Again, the tech boost, everything else. I know that Nebula doesn't need the tech power back boost and stuff like that, but you know, still just in case. Advanced power boost. And here's a scary, scary man thing, right? On hazard shift, uh, hazard shift, uh, shock and bleed and man thing himself inflicts poison so basically this fight kind of requires three immunities or close to that and uh he, well here's going to be the fight so bait out the heavy attack if you get your timing right you can punish that heavy attack as i did just here now thanks to the hazard shift i already have 20 charges so we just uh parried and then i'm going to drop a level two and uh, that's forty-two thousand damage uh, it's just, I, I love this damage here. Boom, and that's 42,000 per tick. I mean, Jesus Christ, sweet baby. Uh, that's one fried man thing. But here we are. And now this Ebony Maw. Now, I was slightly worried about this Maw, and actually, you know, I don't often duel for Warfights, but for this one, I did duel. 
But again, at this point, you know, the nerves, the stress, everything's coming in. But the plan is fairly simple. Get to your level 2 again. Parry special done. Right. Nebula nuke. Well, here's the first thing. You do get significantly less power from your power stat 1 boost against Ebony Maw because of his uh, awakened ability. Which is fine. Still getting that. I have 20 charges here. Easy. I just need to be wary of Falter. Now, <laughs> well, here's the first problem. I get in intercepted, which, you know, sucks. And uh, he already has used level 1. Now I have 2 bars of power, but Falter's coming. So, I wait out this Falter. I wait out this Falter. And now I just need to land a parry. Land a parry. Parry the medium, he drops a heavy attack. Parry the... And here I finally get in that parry. We can see the exact second. We can see the exact... So, 39. And... 39. Falter. <laughs> the last hit of my level 2 the falter with that i get the degen which is obviously fantastic and here i was planning on baiting out at level two and you know just pushing him away a bit to hit his block i did not notice that he already started level two so this was just a panic mistake and obviously then my region is nearly saving me there but in the end i do die but this was such a painful mistake and at this point War is even, man. This is such a stupid, stupid mistake as well. I got him down to 41% health. Only thing I needed to do is build up more charges. If need be, just dance against the wall. Just dance against the wall. Wait out the falters and get in another parry or something. But I did want to create more space. And uh, yeah, here we are. We are tied now. We are tied. Obviously, I feel absolutely awful for this death. The previous death had... The, the one that ended last war, it didn't matter. We had like eight death lead. I was doing a fight that I wasn't meant to do. I was groggy still, you know, just woken up. I, I don't stress about that death. Obviously, it sucks. But I don't stress. This one, though, this one really did piss me off. Especially because I ate that level 2 at the end. Even if my level 2 faltered and I got that degen. I, you know, should be more careful there. It's a stupid mistake. And obviously, stress, pressure, cult, as you will, but it's a stupid mistake. Okay, now at this point, we're spending all the loyalty in the world <laughs> and uh, reviving Nebula and uh, regening the Nebula. We still have the boost active. We're entering the fight. And, uh, well, we need to finish it. There's nothing to it. We need to finish it. And the plan is virtually the same. But in this case, though, I just figured I don't even need to drop a level 2. I just need to get in a parry. That's it. And now, you know, we're going to see that. I get that parry in. Fine. Drop a heavy attack for good measure. But, you know, he's just dead from those shocks and the fight's over. That's how close or far I was from finishing out that previous fight, really. Which kind of just uh, stunk. Which kind of just stunk. Now, I do have another fight. I probably should have taken some more time for before doing this fight, because obviously I was pissed off, stressed, angry at myself. Uh, especially, especially because, you know, the war was still undecided. And uh, <laughs> uh, this this was our worst war of the season by far. But uh, either way, I'm going to put on another advanced power boost, which uh, is the theme of this war, especially with Nebula. I didn't have to, but still. And uh, here, uh, again, uh, the nodes are switched off, so I'm not bound by safeguard, I believe. Uh, but also, most importantly, uh, her special attacks do nothing. She can't go invisible, so I'm not going to miss. And the plan is just to play this super safe. Uh, you will rarely have seen, perhaps, uglier war fights here, because I'm blocking everything. I'm just blocking for the sake of blocking here at this point. So I'm going to want her to use that level 2. Before I throw my level 3, that's fine. I have 18 charges, whatever, I get to 20 because for the sake of it. And uh, I drop my level 3 here. And, uh, you know, at this point, the fight's pretty much sealed. Uh, so, again, just bait out that heavy attack. Hit that guillotine, all of those shocks are starting to do damage. I'm just block baiting a heavy attack. Sweet, no problem there. Uh, she is, you know, melting already. Uh, plenty of shocks active. She doesn't want to throw that, but I just parried her and uh, those 25 shocks. And, you know, I just parried her and I didn't strike her. 
I just uh, got my charges back and the fight's over. It's a very, very kind of simple, straightforward fight there past that point, and that was it. Again, this was a separate clip of my failure. But the big moment of truth, the big moment of truth is, uh, is, is, is here. We did win this war uh, on time. Uh, we tied for Loki, cleared rest of the fights as well. But uh, we did win on time and well, with fairly decent margin. We realized also in the middle, uh, well, not in the middle, but towards the end of the war that we do have quite significant time advantage because uh, one of our bosses also forced like a five minute timeout uh, in one of the battle groups. Uh, so that, you know, did not only get us the seventh kill, which obviously played a major, major role, but also those extra five minutes added humongously uh, to the amount of fighting time in for Loki and uh, so we ended up 7-7 but as a tiebreaker we win against for Loki on time which is obviously extremely extremely fortunate for us uh, despite uh, my pitiful performance but you know that being said we all fight as a team and you know both teams had seven KOs in total so as we can see when it comes to fights though this one did take substantially more fights which immediately nets me <laughs> but uh you know, that's fine. When it comes to potion use, I used the 2 level 3, 2 level 4, and 4 level 5 potions. So I used 8 potions in total, which again goes up to 190,000 loyalty. 190,000 loyalty. 8 potions, you know, 1 death, and then just uh, healing the chip damage. Uh, 190,000 loyalty, here we go. And then on top of that, obviously, I did use uh, several of the class boosts and 3-minute uh, boosts. That's another... 66,000 loyalty. So this word alone, I used 256,000 worth of loyalty, which is obviously uh, which is obviously, you know, vast. vast. Previous two words, I used 70k. This one war, I used 250k. So as far as it goes to the champions that have been using this war, I took six fights with Nebula, one death with Nebula, and one fight with Nimrod. And in the previous war, uh, as I said, I did one fight, uh, but I did not use any extra potions. I just had to use some extra boosts for that fight, and that's it. And uh, so far, we can see that uh, CGR has taken four fights, Nimrod has taken three fights, and Nebula has taken the most fights at the moment, which is six. So those are my war stats. Uh, good war to four Loki. Uh, wish them the best of luck for the remainder of the season. Uh, so New Nation currently is 2-1, and uh, yeah, we still have nine wars to go this season, so the season is just getting started, everything can happen. We can even rematch for Loki later on. I do believe there has to be like a five-war gap, so one, two, three, four, five, so war 9, 10, 11, 12, I think is when we can rematch for Loki for a more spicier finish, maybe. Either way, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button, hit that sub button, hit all the good buttons, and I will catch you guys soon. See ya. Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So we have all the information about 